Sooner fans, you really need to go check out our podcast partners. First off, teambarfinder.com. Download their app on the Apple Store or on Google Play. Find out where you can watch your Sooners locally at your local pub. Also, go check out tailgateconnect.com for the best tailgates across the country. And go learn football from Jason Young, JY, and the Trench Warfare Report, www.trenchwarfarereport.com. Let's get this going. Hey, Sooner Football fans, this is your Sooner Football Fans podcast. You got Terry and Rob here. Boomer Rob. Boomer Terry. And Caleb is on the sidelines out delivering ICs on this day. So you just got me and Rob, and we are coming at you from the podcast palace in beautiful Norman, Oklahoma. Where we are not affiliated with the University of Oklahoma. But we do have eligibility left. Hey, I got it out right that time, Rob. Very good. Um, just so you know, also, man, make sure and follow us, like us. Subscribe to the podcast right now while you're listening to us. Tell your friends about it. Like I said, on most uh, music apps, you can share what you're listening to. If you don't mind, hit that share button to share it to Facebook or Twitter. Let everybody know you're listening to us. Um, but, Rob, it's kind of almost, or it's kind of football season in Oklahoma right now, isn't well, it? Well, we got some football talk, and that's exciting <laughs> for me. I don't know about Yeah, the, the Sooner started uh, spring practice on Tuesday. Um, what are your thoughts on spring practice, Rob, just as a whole? I mean, in high school going through it, I know it's not as in-depth, especially as old as we are, but did, did it really make much sense to you, um, spring football? Well, it, for us, Terry, I think it was more of, um, you know, trying to get us back into shape from, yeah. you know, being off for so long. I don't think these guys have to worry about that. Yeah. They, they, they stay in pretty good shape. <laughs> I, I, but I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, spring football, and I was like, what is what is the point of spring football? I mean, other than you know, what it's a month, a month and a half worth of practice time that they get in. I don't think they do a lot of hitting. So the coaches only get a certain amount of time to right. be with them, and uh, this is part of the time that they are given to, you know, see where see how far they've come. You know, yeah. to to see if uh, Charleston Rambo has put on twenty five thirty pounds of muscle like CD did that one year. Right. You know. So that's, you know, they're in the evaluation stage, basically, of seeing how well their talent is progressing. Yeah. And, of course, we will have the spring game coming up on the 18th. 18th. 18th at 5 p.m. You were correct. I was, I was wrong. Yeah. I will, I will accept my – used to that, my, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> but I could have swore I saw something where it said 2 p.m. But um, it is a going to be – I don't know that it'll be dark, but it'll be, you know, now with dusky. Yeah, the you know the time moving up. Yeah, this they need to leave the time, by the way, <laughs> just like it is. Um, but we are going to get into the depth chart for spring um, and uh, some other sooner notes. But I wanted to get Rob's input too on. You probably haven't heard, but maybe you have. I know you. You're under. I doubt it. I'm. I am on the. Um, yeah, I haven't seen any. That news. the um, Ivy League has canceled their conference tournament. Oh, no, I did not know that. Yeah. Um, coronavirus. Well, now. Concerns. I, I don't know about about them, but I do know that there's talk, you know, I work in the sports entertainment industry. Right. And there's talk about um, them playing games in empty. Empty arenas. Arenas. Yeah. So, I think the Thunder. That's a real possibility, actually. Yeah, the Thunder and. Well, all the NBA teams had to or were supposed to um, submit a report on what they're doing today on Tuesday with the uh, coronavirus, what they're, you know, with the deal. And I think out in California, San Jose, wherever the Sharks are at, they're on a five game road trip. But if right now it's government mandated by the city, county out there that no crowds bigger than a thousand gathering so uh, they will play that doesn't make sense but <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. just say no crowd but i mean it, it, arena gatherings is what they're saying no no indoor gatherings of more than a thousand people okay. and so the san jose sharks are going to be playing in an empty arena next week well that's certainly been the talk and i gotta be honest with you uh, it has already affected the company i work for because 
not only do they run a lot of sporting, you know, basketball, football, baseball, right. that kind of thing, but they also do like the Kentucky Derby and right. there's a great big tennis tournament in Indian Wells, uh, California that we do. They canceled the whole tournament. Yeah. So we, we send some of our managers out to support that and they're coming home. Uh, so. And the University of Oklahoma, when they come back from spring break for two weeks, are going to be on um, internet learning. Right. And, and I kind of get that with the university because um, nobody knows where all these kids are going. And so they're saying the incubation period is two weeks. So when all these kids get back from wherever from it is there, there yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the, everything should be fine. I think that's pretty smart. You know, and, and we talked about it. We I don't know, jokingly or everything else, but, you know, a doctor, um, oh gosh, Dr. Drew. Man, he jumped all over the media the other day. It was on Facebook and stuff about the media scaring the public about it. It's a flu, da, 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 which it is. But what they're working on the CDC and everything else is trying to stop the spread of it to go rampant until they can get a vaccine and all this, you know, vaccine and some type of work for it. But, you know, we in America aren't used to being told we can't do something. Right. And as a result, all the stores are empty of toilet paper. <laughs> toilet paper. And <laughs> I went to, I mean, somebody put a deal out uh, um, about Walmart in the san- hand sanitizer section. S- Saturday, I was grocery shopping. I went over to get some uh, hand soap. It was all gone. There was oh, like God. four or five little bottles oh of it up gosh. there. So I thought, I ain't even going to try to find some Purell. I mean, because, <laughs> mm. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I think we're probably over the next 30 to 60 days going to see a lot of that. Um, the NBA may be playing in empty arenas. Uh, March Madness, you know, we talked about it on the last podcast. March Madness um, has already talked about playing. The NCAA has talked about playing in uh, empty arenas. So the overall safety of everybody is what's concerned. Um I don't know. We don't want to get political in here. I'm going to, I'm just going to leave with the rest of my opinions to myself. I work <laughs> in healthcare. Um, yeah. you know, so, um, anyway, um, how's work going, Rob? Are you, uh, cause you know, we're all on Rob's timeline right now, as far as when <laughs> new podcasts drop. Yeah. Um, we got someone hired and I am in the process of, training so it's a bit tedious for me half the day at OU half the day at Chesapeake so tomorrow I'll be at the Thunder game I think unless I don't have to be then I won't (laughs) (laughs) and so pretty soon you'll be settling back down to a normal job that would be awesome yeah Yeah. Yeah. well that's good and I think did I tell you I don't know if I told you this or not but I think I get to go to the Masters oh we get to go to the masters that's right <laughs> we get to go to the masters mm-hmm. well how well, how's that going to happen well so the company i work for runs that golf tournament mm-hmm. so they need support from upper level management and uh that be you i happen to be volunteering <laughs> <laughs> so it's the week before the spring game though so yeah uh may or may not get to go so, yeah because we'll you'll have to be get setting up yeah, stuff for the spring yeah. game. Any word on uh, our halftime and enjoyment for the spring game I'm or go pre-game? Ahead and sing. You're going to sing. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. Rob and the Gypsy Queens. The, okay, <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> the Gypsy Queens. Yeah, um, and we'll get more into the spring game too. Um, no, she finally did reply to it. I put. I saw there was a post. I wanted to see this, and I. I uh, hit Tara up to see what her thoughts were on it. Your thoughts, Rob. Okay. Um, if you were offered $15 million cash. Mm-hmm. I take it. Would you switch oh. your sports allegiance to your hated rivals? Seahawks become Niners. Example, Seahawks, Niners fans, uh, Washington fans, Oregon fans, etc. For $15 million would you become an Okie Stank or a Texas fan? 
Ja. Ja. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, let's think about it, Rob. No. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you ask me again, I can shave some time off that answer. But <laughs> so, so your your allegiance can be bought, is what uh, you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So I is, is that a no for you? Yeah, it's a no. You, for you're going to turn down 15 million. Yeah, I would turn down okay. 15 million. You go right ahead. I'll just wear orange every day <laughs> because of my life because you're going to you're you're going to take it, and then I'm just going to you know. <laughs> live off you <laughs> okay yeah yeah terry I'll, i will wear i'll even well i was gonna say i'll get an OU, osu tattoo but i don't know yeah <laughs> but i'll wear orange i will wear orange i might carry a shotgun with me but i'll wear orange so i retweeted it and i tagged tara in it i was like i want to know what I the know rabbit what sooner already. says and she finally did in, in, in big letters oh hell no <laughs> <laughs> listen fifteen thousand. it's a no yeah 15, 15 million <laughs> Listen, I'm all over that like ugly on an ape. Yeah. <laughs> Our uh, buddy Wallace Marsh said, uh, I'm sure you know my answer. And uh, the guy on Twitter, Larry Baxter, said, just make the cash, uh, just make the check out to cash. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm on, yeah, me and you, same page, bro. So your allegiance to the Sooners and Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys, can be easily bought with 15 million. Listen, the Dallas Cowboys, you could do like 15 bucks. And I'd, be like, yeah. I'd, be, I'd be sad with that. But, you know, 15 million. Come on, bro. <laughs> 1.5 million. Yeah. <laughs> so Rob, Rob can, you know, easily, easily. I want to come off as a cheap date, but 1.5 million? million. Come on. <laughs> so uh, I cannot be bought. I, I couldn't do it. I mean, I couldn't do it. I'm serious, man. I could not do it. I could not wear orange. I cannot fathom rooting for Oklahoma State when you know they're probably going to lose. I mean, how are you a fan of that school? Well, they haven't ever won anything. Listen, I would wear orange, and my sister would be awfully pretty. <laughs> I'm just joking out there, y'all. Come on. I, I'm just joking. He won't wear orange. Uh, that's at Terry Long 51. <laughs> I'm joking. Seriously. So, um, but I've already read both books in their library. So, yeah. I mean, I could have a degree from there pretty yeah. easy. C. Dot Run and <laughs> Curious George. <laughs> C. Spot Run and Curious George is in their library. Um, but, uh, now and another thing we didn't uh, we did one week worth of it we were going to do we might do two weeks worth again uh, tonight you know, we said we would um, but it is that time again for sports that, that we, don't, we watch. don't watch okay and we're going through college sports right now started out with soccer we started out with soccer um, which you know men's or women's we do not watch don't watch them. Have no interest in watching them. You're not going to change our minds. If not you, even. A, not, <laughs> listen, if 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 I got fifteen dollars for going in, I wouldn't go. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Um. One point five million, maybe. <laughs> listen, I'm a big soccer fan. At one point five mil. Yeah, I could be bought into a soccer fan. I'm like, but, go uh, kick it. Yeah, kick it. Run kick fast. It to him, and then kick it back over there. Yeah. Uh. Then the next one was fencing. Fencing. Uh, we yeah. we don't watch fencing. However, we did think it would be cool if one of the guys just came out and went, you know. Um, just started whooping the other yeah, one. Just with swing just, it, yeah, just, just swing yeah, it. Yeah, just swinging wildly with it. <laughs> just, or if there was blood, yeah, we'd, yeah, we'd watch Yeah, that. you know, if it was actually fencing instead of guys in these white padded suits and masks. I'm thinking that the there would be a lot less contestants if that was the case. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think we're going to go this week with field hockey. Field hockey. Okay. There's f- for two reasons. One, um, you know, it's a version of soccer, which hockey is a version of soccer. It's just played on ice and with skates and with sticks. <laughs> and uh, field hockey. Have you ever, ever in your life watched a field hockey game, Rob? I've never, ever even seen a highlight of a field hockey game. <laughs> So, never a highlight. Well, well, that's not the same thing as the one that like the Duke school, the Ivy League schools play with the little lacrosse. That's lacrosse. Okay, yeah. Yeah. that's not the same. Yeah. Uh, um, but field hockey, uh, Wikipedia 
So, you know, we, we'll know what it's about. Field, oh, okay. field hockey, is, hockey is widely played team sport of the hockey family. <gasps> Go figure. Huh. <laughs> it can be played on grass, watered turf, artificial turf. Wait, what's watered turf? I'm guessing maybe it rained. Okay. All right. Or, I don't know, artificial turf, synthetic field, as well as an indoor boarded surface. Each team uh, plays with 10 field players and a goalkeeper, so that would be 11 players. Mm -hmm. Players commonly use sticks out of wood, carbon fiber, fiberglass, or a combination of carbon fiber, fiberglass, in different quantities. And you go around knocking each other down with them sticks? The length is of that of a hockey stick. Um, Today, the game is played globally, mainly in parts of Western Europe, South Asia, Southern Africa, Australia, New Zealand, Argentina, parts of the United States, primarily New England and the Mid-Atlantic States. Hmm. Simply known as hockey in many territories, the term field hockey is used primarily in Canada and the United States where ice hockey is more uh, popular. In Sweden, it's called land hockey. Okay. So... Is there anything else you want to know about field hockey? Do men play that as well? Yeah, it's got pictures of dudes playing it. Oh. Okay. Um, first played in 19th century England. Are those the dudes that couldn't make the football team? Because, <laughs> I, <laughs> or, I, or it's, I guess oh, since it started in there, it was probably guys who couldn't play, play football, ah. soccer. Okay. So they got sticks and probably were slapping the ball around. All so right. that's what field hockey is. Okay. It's guys who couldn't kick. They got sticks and hit the ball around. That well, has I mean, to be if you want to get a stick and hit the ball, you might as well just play golf. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is a um, – the, the equipment is hockey, a hockey ball, hockey stick, mouth guard, and shin guards. You wusses. Um, it, was a, it was an Olympic sport in 1908, 1920, and 1928 to present. Oh, it still is? Yes. Okay. See, I didn't even know that. Did not know that. Yeah. So, um, they got some deals here. It looks like from ancient Greece. It looks like it was played, but you know they're running around naked. Uh, what? Yes. I mean, they got like this carving. Uh, hmm. Ancient Greek players of some. Well, town. that would make it a whole lot more interesting. Uh, an ancient form of field hockey or ground billiards. Hmm. Um. And it's at the National Archeolo- Archaeological Museum in Athens. And it's kind of like the, you know, the rest. You've been to the Wrestling Hall of Fame up there in Stinkwater? No. You haven't? No. Well, you know, they have, you know, back in the first Olympics, I guess they ran around and played sports naked because these hmm. guys are playing field hockey. And that's how wrestling came about because they were I'm naked. I was out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would I would not have been a a wrestler in the no. in the early days. Yeah, I'm out on that deal. Yeah, but there's a big bronze statue of these two dudes. Hmm. But and they didn't have a problem with that. Apparently not. I mean, there's guys standing around holding their sticks, and one of them is junk is facing right towards, and it's a carving, you know, like a pottery. Okay. Dude just run around with their junk out and with sticks. Hit. Sun's out, guns <laughs> out. What? No thanks. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, not do yeah, that. Yeah, so field hockey is a sport that we do not watch. And you know something? I wouldn't watch it back then either, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's, you know, you watch movies that are like cringeworthy because, you know, it makes <laughs> – yeah. It makes you feel some kind of way. Yeah, that would make me feel some kind yeah. of way. <laughs> like, stop! <laughs> can 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 uh, can we you know put you know clothes on? Um, oh, and here is another thing. Uh, um, uh, Nathan McCollum, who's been to our um, you know um, tailgates, big OU fan, he has to tweet out today to us and wanting to know if it's okay to wear his Baker Mayfield Browns jersey. To the spring game. You're going to say no. I'm going to say no. Period. Hmm. Period. There's never a time that you would wear a Baker Mayfield Browns jersey to any sporting event in Oklahoma. Unless you wanted to? It's not proper, Rob. Well, Baker's going to be there. Yeah. And <laughs> as a Sooner, not <laughs> as a Cleveland Brown. Okay. What if he What if he doesn't have a Sooner Baker 
shirt. Oh, he can get one. If you can go get a, ba- a Baker Browns jersey, you can go get a Sooner Baker Sooner jersey. All right, let me ask you this, and, and, and your answer on this question will tell me whether or not this is legitimate, okay? okay. If he was a Steeler. Nope, would not do it. <laughs> would not do it. I, you know, you, you wouldn't be more okay with it though. No, okay. would not. Okay. I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be okay with somebody wearing a Detroit Lions Billy Sims jersey to an OU game. Ooh, um, yeah. <laughs> come on now. Or why? Why would I? It's not. It's not a. It's it's a sooner event. I agree. You know, and we all know. You know that at the spring game. They are going to unveil Baker's statue, and I get the gist. It's going to be Baker Day, but you know maybe the university ought to hand out Baker jerseys or Baker T-shirts with six on it. That way, we won't have to wear. Plus, a Browns jersey has orange on it. Period. That's enough. <laughs> that you know, one point five million, Terry. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. 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 Okay. But um, no, Nathan was just giving us a hard time. I had a few people. I was like, you know, hey, you know, it's. You know, he's supporting Baker. And I was like, yeah, it's just my pet peeve, mm-hmm. you know. And they've already put out a vote on the stadium for the Tennessee game. Seen that. Striped, white out, half red, half white, corners, you know, corners red and white, corner right. What do you think? Well, I think if you do red out, there'll be a whole lot of people that go, oh, red doesn't match my <laughs> shoes, so I'm going to wear white. And then you're going to get, you know, speckled we, anyway. We already have a red out. That's every home game. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, half the people wear white. Yeah, <laughs> so, but they're saying you know the stripe, which I am completely against. I don't like the stripe because we lost when we we're striped. Yeah, we we don't you know I just we don't I don't think we play as well. Um, okay, that's crazy, but they've got you know a corner you know the northwest corner you know uh, red, the northeast corner white, you know kind of. I kind of like that one. That's the one I voted for. Uh, um, then they had, you know, the north side red, the um, uh, other side, and somebody tweeted, why don't we checker it? <laughs> Confuse the Tennessee ball. <laughs> they wouldn't know what to do, would they? You know, <laughs> not worry about what we're wearing in the stands. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure they don't care. Yeah, but, um, you know, it's going to be a national televised game. You know, you want to... I think the whiteout, we... You know, had a few people on Facebook was like, you know, when I, you know, I never had a shirt so dirty in my life after the, the whiteout last year. I think whiteouts should be somebody like Penn State, you know, somebody whose color is primarily white. Okay. You know, I think so. we ought to do red every game, but that's I do too. Me. I do too. I don't think we should be doing this, hmm. you know, but, you know, they don't ask my opinion. I just give it. Actually, they do. When they put those things out yeah. of the way, they're asking for your opinion. <sighs> That's just an ugly jersey. Well. Crap brown and orange. Hmm. But, um, want we'll to talk a little bit about a Sooner baseball? Okay. Um, but they're playing University of Texas Arlington tonight. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, freshman Peyton Graham was the Big 12 player of the week. He hit um, 505 games last week. Hit lights out, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, he went 10 for 20 at the plate, scoring nine runs and tallying four RBIs to lead the Sooners to uh, to a 4 and one week. Um, and for our um, f- OU baseball notes, just to catch everybody up, Oklahoma is making leaps and bounds. In all- Golly, there is a lot of – rankings across <laughs> across they're number nine in baseball america so they're top 10 the number nine by a perfect game number 12 by ncbwa number 13 by division one baseball number 13 by us today usa today coaches uh they went four and one last week uh beat dallas baptist 10 to three we were recording last week when they were putting that whooping on mm-hmm. um they beat uh arkansas pine bluff 13 to two uh, lost the first game at home to San Diego State. Uh, won the second one eight to four, and won the last one nine to eight in ten innings. And just so everybody knows, also we put it out on Twitter and stuff. We are going to be having a um, 
OU baseball tailgate on the northeast or northeast. <sighs> I was thinking football, northeast corner of the state. All right. <laughs> in the uh, right field berm, on the right field berm. We will be there uh, with Derek Morton, Demo. Um, Demo's bringing a grill. We're going to grill hot dogs. Bring your chair. Bring your drinks. We're going to provide the hot dogs and buns and stuff if, if y'all want to donate some money to it when you get there. Um, but uh, we're going to watch the whole game. We're going to get there about noon. Um, I will be waving at you guys yeah. from the concourse, <laughs> um, and invite all the Sooner fan because the berm is free, and it's you know, hey, if you've sent out in the outfield in games, outfield seats ain't bad, not bad, and so the berm is free, so we'll get there early, we'll secure a spot, and um, we'll be tweeting out where we're at, uh, so everybody can come and join us and kick back them because uh, it is OU Texas that week weekend they'll be doing a three game uh, friday night saturday afternoon and sunday afternoon i think texas is ranked too so it'll be good good matchup yeah <clears throat> but like i said this week they are playing uh ut arlington right now um i think the girls are playing texas too and then that weekend yep here or down mm-hmm. there here oh okay yep. um thursday they go to cal poly friday at cal poly man they got a four game stand at cal poly thursday friday Saturday and Sunday. Um, anything you want to know? Uh, Oklahoma has stolen 29 bases through uh, 17 games. Do you know what that means? It means they pretty good at it. They tied their uh, base, uh, stolen bases from last year for the entire season. Right, right. So they've already stolen as many as they did last year. Um, the Oklahoma pitching staff ranks third in the nation in strikeouts. Um, OU pitchers have struck out 210 batters in 152 innings this season. Uh, junior Cade Cavalli has a team high 37 punch outs in 23 innings. Uh, Levi Prater has struck out 33 in 23 innings. And freshman Jake Bennett, 16 in 8 innings. Hmm. Um, Oklahoma Sooners pitchers rank fourth nationally and first Big 12 with a 4.67 strikeout to walk ratio. Holy cow. They're good, man. (laughs) (laughs) They've only uh, issued 45 walks this year. Uh, Sooner baseball ranks nationally in fielding percentage, .985, six doubles, 41, tenth in triples, uh, eight, 13th in hits, 166, and 19th in fielding double plays, 14th. Uh, Treadway's 28 hits are second most in the nation. Tanner uh, Treadway. Uh, Prater stuck out 13 batters in seven innings, allowing just uh, a run on five hits and two walks Saturday against San Diego State. He retired 15 of his final 16 batters. Um, but They're going to make a run this year. Yeah, um, and also coming up, uh, OU, I believe it's next week. Yeah, next Tuesday is playing Arkansas at the Chick- Chickasaw Bricktown Ballpark. Um, and they will play a non-conference game against Oklahoma State at One Oak Field in Tulsa. Um, and uh, uh, open uh, Big 12 play with the Red River rivalry against Texas March 20th through at Eldell Mitchell Park. So – that that's what's coming up. So what what are you what are your thought? I I listened to Saturday's game on the radio. Yeah, um, it's a good ball team. Yeah, yeah. Skip Johnson is one heck of a coach, and he's finally getting a lot of talent in here. And they're just they're playing really well. They all hit the ball. They all they all take their cuts. Yeah. I can't stand it when teams get in there and they're just you know yeah. Those guys get in there and they take their. Yeah, they're going. They're going. They're mm-hmm. they're going. They're going for the base. You but know, you know what I hate base. about college baseball now is those bats. They're dead. Yeah, they are. They <laughs> are dead. <laughs> like, so it, it, only the guy. The guy. Only guys hitting it out right now are the guy. The big strong. You know, yeah. Good hitting. Well, you know, players. but and that's the thing I l- like about college baseball is, and I always have about college baseball is. They're trying to get on base. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and that's a, one of the things about softball that's fun. I mean, they're going to, what is it called, that slap bunt and bunt in softball. You'll see, you know, college, you know, bunting, you know, to get a guy on base and then bunting to get a guy in scoring position. 
the game it's fun to watch because they're you know it's kind of like chess they're trying to get their players into position to score i don't feel like major league baseball has done that for you know years well major league baseball doesn't play small ball anymore yeah. which is button guys over button right. and those, you know hit and run that kind of thing yeah but you should swing for the fence yeah i mean what the object of the game is to win the game yeah. well not to them they're getting paid <laughs> right well, true, so true. the difference between 18 home runs and 28 home runs you know is, is the difference in you know five million dollar contractors no, and a bonus and yeah yeah i get that but i mean that's one of the things again you know the small ball working your players into position to score you know sacrificing yourself to get to get a player you know a player into score that's what i like about college baseball yeah. i mean i really do because and like you said you know oklahoma is a team that goes after the the pitch they're mm-hmm. They're they're not aggressive. That's yeah. They're aggressive. aggressive They're aggressive batters. So makes baseball fun to watch. Yeah. You know, a lot of people can't watch baseball because they say it's long and boring. Well, you watch a team like Oklahoma play, who's aggressive and they go after the ball and they you know they do all those things. That's fun to watch. Well, when they you know we lost to Missouri uh, two weeks ago, and you know we left the bases loaded twice in that game. Yep. Okay, so Oklahoma go, you know, if you can load the bases twice and you end up leaving them stranded, you're putting guy, you're, you're hitting the ball and getting guys on base. Yep. They should have won that Missouri game. That was Definitely horrible to listen that. to because mm-hmm. they, they had that one in the bag a couple of times. And what do they do? Come out the next day and throw a no-no against mm-hmm. LSU. So, um, but um, we've done field hockey. We've done our baseball. Um did you get to see anything on uh, Lincoln Riley's press conference? I listened to about half of it. So did um, did you hear what he said about marijuana? That <laughs> <laughs> it's bad and Kate. <laughs> uh, no, I did not. I did not. Okay, understand. I'm going to preface it. You can go. You can find it everywhere on Twitter. You can find it on theAthletic.com as well. He was asked about. You know, we've got three players suspended. And about the whether or not uh, the NCAA um, or university, the Big Twelve, should change their stance on marijuana or change. And his first response was, "They they need to, as well as the universe, you know, everybody involved, because it's different than it was fifteen years ago. Yeah, a lot different. Well, he's right. And." Whether you agree, disagree on legalizing it or having, you know, marijuana dispensaries on every corner like we do in Oklahoma now, um, it's a change in time. And it's it's changing drastically where eventually it won't be illegal across the country, I believe. Yeah. Well, they're uh, going to have a little truck like the ice cream truck that drives around now, <laughs> you know, playing well, Bob Marley. Yeah. <laughs> and you can run out of your you can run out of your house with like, you know a couple bucks and yeah. Well, I told you, you know, in California, it's like ordering Mazios. You know, uh, David's wife has it, and you, she picked up the phone and calls in like thirty minutes later. Ding dong, really? Yeah, he has a little bag, and you have you know candy bars and oh gummies and all that. But um, it is, you know, times have changed, and the NCAA, and you know universities and um stuff are going to have to catch up with times and and i really liked what lincoln said was you know it needs to be a situation that we address it as it's not breaking you know, he didn't say this i'm kind of verbatim i'm kind of i'm verbating it okay i'm putting my twist on it but i got him to saying is because he did say this it needs to be addressed as as if you were you know which they do now still but if you had a player abusing alcohol, you know, that we, we talk to them and counsel them about the health benefits, how it's going to affect them in their future and da, 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 da right now. in a drug that is legal, if you, you know, because there is no, and they ask him this, what if one of your players has a CBD card? Is he, you know, exempt from testing? He's like, no, I was like, well, you got a doctor's prescription for something, right? you know, um, uh, touch subject right there. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've always, I've always, you know, personally, again, this is politics, but personally for a long time, I've thought they needed to legalize marijuana. Okay. Um, my wife sometimes agrees with that. She's a drug and alcohol counselor. The lovely Teresa is, but, um, I always figured, you know, they got syntax on cigarettes, beer and everything else. It just generate more tax revenue. Mm -hmm. 
Um, That's Colorado. Yeah. The, you know, people say it's a gateway drug. I'm sorry. It's not. Okay. I know people. I have friends. Not you, Rob. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that have smoked. I'm not your friend or I don't <laughs> smoke. <laughs> that I'm have just, smoked yeah, marijuana as long as I've known them. Okay. Drink beer, smoke a joint. That's all they've ever done. They've never went into crack and heroin and everything else. They inject the meth into their eyeballs. Yeah. They, you know, like, you know, roll, you know, putting a little bit in a pipe and hitting it a couple of times a day and they're fine. You know, it's interesting because I really think, you know, the, some of the stuff I've heard on the radios is, is that maybe that's Oklahoma's stance and like they're, they're combating it is, Hey, it's legal here in Oklahoma. Um, there may be some type of that twist to it, or they're stretching this out and they're working with the NCAA to get it to change. And if it changed, then, Hey, these guys were just before it. It's a new rule. Now can they go ahead and play? So, well, I don't think they'll make any punishment or lack of retroactive. Yeah. You're going to have, they're going to have to deal with the, yeah. whatever's going on there, but it may one day be certainly legal, but, um, even if it even if the state legalizes it, the university still has the right to say no. Right. Our players are not going to do this, and if you do, you know. Right. So. Um, but, you know, I mean, Teresa's had doctors and therapists, you know, um, tell her that she needs to try it. She still hasn't yet, but uh, that it would probably do her good. I, I know people who use it for, you know, medicinal reasons, and it helps them, so. Um, but anyway, that was, you know, so we may be getting our guys off of suspension. Um, we already talked about Baker's statue going to be unveiled inside the stadium. Um, we did, did we, it's going to be, I talked about it, but I don't think we talked yeah, about no, it. Not talk, yeah, it is going to be inside the stadium. The unveiling of it is, yeah, we didn't talk about that. Did we? Cause I, you know, what's it going to be, Rob? Is it well, going to be I tell you what. the flag? Is it going to be the Heisman pose? I will the crotch keep my grab? eyes out for it. <laughs> and when I lay eyes on it, I will. Yeah. Now, we talked about this before the podcast, but you know the the it's known that the Heis the, the Heisman winner gets to choose his statue. They right. the university allows it. And I hadn't thought about this until you and I were talking about it a while ago. I don't think it's going to be the flag. I don't either. Because it that's going to make his statue thirty feet taller mm. <laughs> than unless he's they're doing it with him planting it. Um if he's running with it, you know, the flag's gonna be so much bigger. His statue is going to stand out and I don't think even though he gets to choose it, I don't think he wants that. I don't think there was there he wouldn't be showing respect, I don't think. I would agree to, with that to assessment. That. I think he'll choose something that it may be different than the rest of them, but yeah. I don't think it'll be. You know, it definitely won't be the crotch grab, yeah. <laughs> but I don't think he'll have a flag either. Yeah, I, I'm leaning towards the. I think it's going to be his Heisman, the natural Heisman pose that came about in the Oklahoma State game that year, his so, senior year. Uh, that's a good one. Yeah, I mean, it was all over social media. It was on ESPN. Um, Herb Street tweeted it out. You know, I mean, it was just a. You know, he was stiff arming. You know, not that he had to, an Oklahoma State player. You know. <laughs> but um you know, um I, I, I think that's what it's gonna gonna yeah. I could be wrong, but Well, I, I mean and it's iconic. It's a great you know, it's a great action shot of him, I think. Um, you know, the question is helmet on, helmet off, that kind of thing. Right. You know, because some of them actually do any of them have their helmet no, on? None of them have their helmet on. Mm. You know, I guess that's so we can see their head. But um, I don't know. I, I I just think, like I said, I hadn't thought about this until we were talking about it earlier. If he's got the flag, that makes his statue twice as tall as everybody else's. Unless he's just holding it by his side. Yeah, that's true. Uh, or they make his body shorter. and <laughs> You know, I, I mean, all the statues are the same size. Him carrying a flag, you know. Is mm -hmm. going to make him twice as tall. If it's over his head, for sure. Yeah, yeah. If it's over his head. So, um, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, it'll be interesting to see the crowd's response. You know, because you know everybody wants the flag plant. Mm -hmm. 
Everybody wants the flag plant, and if it except comes, for the people that want the crotch grab, yeah. <laughs> which they're they're kind of fooling themselves. Yeah, they're, they're, he's not going to do that. So, um, but um, I mean, he lives in Ohio, right? Yeah. When when they unveil it, I'm interested to see the crowd's response if it's not the uh, the flag. Huh? Is it going to be, be some booing? There'll probably be some oh. Mm. Oh man, no! Come so, what on. are you hoping for then again? The the Heisman pose? Or I I want the flag, but I don't think it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. The more I've thought about it now, that it's actually fixing to happen, we know it's coming out. Is the flag is going to be is going to make his taller than every much taller than everybody else? Not the picture that I seen. Somebody posted one a picture of it on yeah okay but that's not actual size rob okay i think it was <laughs> yeah i've seen that picture but i mean you know of the one of him planting it down towards the ground maybe that one maybe but i i it, i don't know i'm i would like to see a form of the flag plant mm-hmm. okay what kind of crowd response would come with that oh good lord <laughs> they you know and they crazy. they may you know they may fill that stadium just for mm-hmm. people coming wanting to see that statue. Maybe. You know, I mean, he is that big of an icon with Oklahoma football. Yeah, I wonder where they're going to put his statue because they got two places that are marked off. Marked off. Yeah. One's out on the end on the north side and one's between Billy and or is it wait, it might be between Jason and Sam. Between them. Yeah. So that's a little weird, but I don't know. I mean, they're not in any order, are they? They're just... Well, I, you know, I used to think they were. I used to think... Because um, it's Billy Vessels is on the north, mm-hmm. and then is it Billy Sims? I thought so. But see, Billy is after Steve Owens, and Steve Owens is... Right, right, yeah. yeah 69 so. and 78. <laughs> but you said 69, and it just made me chuckle. I'm sorry. <laughs> we haven't grown up yet. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It just, um, no, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I don't know which order they would put that in. You're right. They aren't in order. So I guess it just doesn't matter. Does yeah. It? I feel like they should be in order, but that's probably the OCD in me. Sam's, <laughs> I Steve think it should, Owens. yeah. You know, uh, Billy Vessels, uh, Steve Owens. Billy no, Sam's. they're not in alphabetical order because Jason White is a W. So he would, yeah. Be, yeah so Sammy B's all the way at the, the south yeah. end, right? So. so, where are they going to put it? Hmm. What if they moved Billy and put it in there? Would you be upset because you can't see Billy every day outside your window? Yeah, you'd be upset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the only good thing about my office. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, let's see. Well, also, um. There's a uh, sermon Redmond Howard and Michael Terry are out for the spring uh, with injuries limited this spring. Nick Benito, uh, Marcus major, uh, Delarian Turner, yell and Justin Broyles. Um, well, we knew that Turner yell and uh, what was the other one that got it? We knew those guys were going to be yeah. out. They're still not healed from those injuries. My question is, are the transfer guys in? From, yeah, from JUCO. Yeah, they're in. So, huh? Um, I wonder why I haven't seen them. I don't know. Riley on the coaching stations. It's kind of our version of boot camp or hell week. You try to design it based on what your team is or what your team needs. Um, <laughs> Riley on the quarterback. He's not opposed to having a clear cut starter after spring. I think there's advantages to that. Are we going to have a starter after spring, Rob? Man, I don't know. You remember we talked about the whole transfer portal thing. So the sooner you name a starter, <laughs> the more time you give that backup to go, eh, maybe I can go ahead and yeah. hit that porter and go start at you know, Texas Tech or whatever. Yeah. So. Um, speaking of that, let's just jump into the depth chart with Oklahoma, the spring practice depth chart. Okay. Quarterback, Spencer Rattler, six, uh, redshirt freshman, six foot 191, or – Tanner Mordecai, 6'2", 208. That's what it says. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tanner Schaefer uh, and Colt Atkinson, a walk-on. Those are the four quarterbacks we have on campus. Who's going to win that battle? 
<laughs> you can't even get it all the way out. I can't. That that quarterback battle is over and has been since yeah. Spencer Rattler walked on, uh, walked on campus. So. Yeah. So um, really, the question probably a better question is, who's the backup? Because I hear that um, uh, Schaefer is pretty good little quarterback. Yeah. So. I guess we'll see come spring game, will we not? Yeah. Uh, running backs. Uh, Kennedy Brook is number one on the depth chart. Trey Sermon, who is injured. He is still two. Uh, Ramonde St- uh, Stevenson uh, suspended. Uh, we don't know yet or not whether or not he's going to have set five more games, do we? Right. No, we don't. Uh, TJ Pledger is fourth. Marcus Major is fifth. And Seth McGowan uh, is sixth. So. That's a that's six guys at running back. We got some depth there, don't we? Mm-hmm. Is Seth McGowan the kid that came in that this? Yeah, he's a freshman. Kind of Samaji P. Ryan esque, yeah. but a little taller. Yeah, 5'11", 215. Yeah. That's my size. Hey, man, I could go play fullback or running back in college. Yep, yep, you could. Uh, speaking of fullbacks, uh, Jeremiah Hall, Jr., 6'2", 239 pounds. Uh, depth chart, Braden Willis. Wait, where is he at on the depth chart? One. Tight end? H back. H back, okay. Braden Willis, 6'3, 235, who is also, um, he's number two in the H back, and Braden Willis is number two at the tight end position. So, Michael Henderson, a freshman, 6'1, um, 234. That's a big old boy. And uh, Dane uh, Sotarelli, I can't pronounce his name. I know his sophomore, 6'3, two. He's a walk on. Tight ends. We got two tight ends, mm-hmm. Austin Stogner and Braden Willis. Is Stogner the one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Stogner. Stogner's going to be a beast, man. He's going to be so good. Um, Here's the thing I didn't realize. Uh, X receiver Jaden Hazelwood or Theo Weiss. Hmm. Wouldn't you move one of them? Because <laughs> uh, Bridges, who's suspended, is the number one on the inside slot and Charleston Rambo is the Z receiver. So, but there's Theo Howard, Marvin Mims, Damon, you know, we got a bunch of receivers, man, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, eleven 10, 11, 11 receivers. Wow. And so. people still want to come here. Yep. Um, the offensive line is going to be, I think these guys are going to re- the spring is going to be great for these guys. They really, you know, we got Creed back leading it. I mean, Spenson, Hayes, Creed, Robinson, and Ely. God, Ely is six six three hundred and twenty eight 328 pounds. That's wow. not a man. That's a, that's a marble statue. He's a big boy. <laughs> big boy. And Stacy Wilkins is six six three ten. Golly. I mean, uh, no, okay. that's what we call them hog mollies, right? Yeah, Noah Nelson, freshman, 6'8", 295. He's yeah. a little boy. He needs to put some meat on. 295, right. he's yeah. got to get up. They'll be able to push him all around the field. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and then there's David Swabe, junior, 6'9", 319. Yeah. How's that? Uh, Another tiny fella. Yeah, little boys. Uh, defense. Let's talk about the speed D for a little bit and the um, depth chart. Strong side defensive end Perkins, who is suspended. Marcus Stripling and Isaiah Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas, Junior. Uh, nose tackle. It's going to be big shoes to fill there. Uh, Winfrey six four three zero five. Jordan Kelly is a sophomore six five three zero three. Or Josh uh, Ellison's a junior, 6'3", 295. Hmm. Um, defensive tackle, Redmond, uh, Laron Stokes, Corey Robertson, Marcus Hicks, <clears throat> Caden Blanchard, and Lindsey Reed, all walk-ons. Those yeah. two are walk-ons. It's, you know, our defensive line is not going to be bad. And actually, all of just going to be inexperienced. A little bit inexperienced, yeah. but the, the I think our problem is going to be at depth at linebacker, or yeah. depth defensively. Period. But especially at linebacker, I think we're pretty thin there. Yeah, we got 
at the will, uh, Deshaun White, uh, Asamoa, Uguabwe. I know that was wrong, so people can crucify me. Shane Witter, uh, the Mike, Caleb Kelly, Robert Barnes, Brian Mead, um, Easton Reeves, and Jake McCoy. And um, they moved two corners into, uh, they moved Barnes. And who was the other one? Um, they moved two um, corners in. Barnes is one of them, and I can't remember the other. I don't either, but you know what? This is an opportunity for Jeremiah Cradell to really step up. I mean, Darian Turner Yell has that spot locked down, right? That's his spot. Yeah. But Cradell has really got an opportunity to make some headway here. So yeah. if he's going to get on the field, he needs to show out here, yeah. I think. Um. Also, big news this week. I know everybody's seen it with Brandon Drum and, you know, on OU Insider. And Brandon Drum actually was up in Washington, D.C. this week visiting with the big five star quarterback, mm. Caleb Williams, who visited the University of Oklahoma last week. Yep. They're saying that he's pretty good. Yeah. And did you see he, you know, they said he's changed his profile pick every week that he goes somewhere to him in that jersey. Did yeah. you see what he changed his profile pick no, to this I did week? Not. Lincoln Riley hugging his mom. Oh, really? Who do you think's got the upper hand? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully his mom's like, hey, boy. <laughs> but uh, he's a five-star number one overall quarterback for 2021. Um, so, and that's perfect. You know, we need to get another five-star in here. Absolutely. Uh, I'm not going to get overly excited, just like I did with an uh, old boy that ended up in Georgia. I done forgot his name. Mm, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Nope, I don't get it. <laughs> um, had he stayed at Oklahoma? You know, I mean, these are kids. Um, I think we got the upper hand on this kid. It sounds like we got the upper Is hand. Is it on. He's from Washington State? Washington, D.C. D.C. Oh, that's not. Yeah. yeah okay. He was, uh, and Brandon was out there uh, visiting with Caleb Williams and uh, four star defensive lineman Monkel Goodwine. So, um, but it seems like he had a great visit, um, liked the campus, his mom liked the campus, liked how everything was centrally located. Mm -hmm. And again, when you change your profile pic to your mama, that means you love your mama. And when you change your profile pic to your mama getting hugged by your, you know, by a coach, that's a whole different level. <laughs> <laughs> or is it that he didn't want to put a profile pic of him in an Oklahoma jersey on there? But why would he put the coach hugging his mom? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm reading more than I need to into that. But glass is half full, kind of a read yeah. there. Yeah. You know, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, you know, if I put, you know, a picture of my mama out there with my coach, you know, that I like like that team's chances of getting me. All right. I'm what are your thoughts? It. Well, we're not going to need a quarterback for a good little while. <laughs> we're kind of set, but hey, I'll take a five-star quarterback any day of the week. Right? Yeah, yeah, five-star quarterback, and you know, um, um, next year is going to be so much fun. I really think it's offensively, it's going to be fun if our defense can continue to improve. I think next year is going to be a fun year. Yeah, I mean, with this, with this this core of receivers and if you know rattler is three quarters of what he's supposed to be he's gonna be he's <laughs> yeah. gonna be come on he's gotta be yeah right we need my, him to be yeah my only concern with him is you know health i mean i think he got hurt a lot in high school but you know you put more muscle on he's gonna be more durable yeah we we really need him to be because really I think Terry, this is not a bold statement I don't think the defense may not be as good as it was last year. <laughs> Shut up, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope I'm wrong, and I would love. How to can come we back be worse? Here. I mean, you're saying that we're going to digress. We're going to get worse. We're well, not, or the effort's not going to be there. I think we're. I just like to say I think we're thin. And we're in a building zone, and he, he don't have his own guys yet? No. I, I mean, some of these guys are definitely his. But obviously, we were so thin on the defensive line that we had to get 
you know, JUCO transfers, which colleges normally don't like to do. No. You don't see Alabama getting JUCO transfers. You know, Clemson, they don't get JUCO transfers. We had to get those because we didn't have enough, you know, actual recruits to, no. you know, fill the spot. So, you know, hopefully these guys pan out for us because if if they don't, we we could – we might not be very good <laughs> yeah. defensively. Well, I just saw Adele here on Twitter from Bob Prisbillo said, um, as soon as uh, Alex Grinch is back among the highlights was saying, I guess they talked to, well, they talked to him today <laughs> spring practice saying the lack of ta- uh, takeaways last year was gross. That was a quote from, from Grinch. So, yeah. you know, we didn't get, um, <laughs> oh some of these guys they're putting in stuff about the coronavirus and being uh-huh. at the well i also think that there's a possibility that grinch is a little bit distracted this year because people are starting to come after him i think if he has a you know let's just say we have a good defense this year next year he probably will be a head coach somewhere don't you think i don't know man i mean what Again, I'm falling on this thing of what 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 has he done to deserve a head coaching job? Okay, same way I am with with Lincoln. Now people come back. Well, hey, he's made the playoffs three times in three years. Went twelve and two. Yeah. Okay. Well, Grinch but he hasn't took won the a worst defense in the nation and moved him up a hundred and <laughs> two spots or whatever, one hundred three spots. <laughs> So yeah, I I don't know. I I don't I don't think the interest is there yet. You might be right, and I hope you are. I'd like to keep him another couple you know, of years. Yeah, you know, and you know, I don't know. I mean, he really. I mean, he has built a name for himself, but you know, he went to you know he was at Washington for a couple of years, started kind of making a name. Then he went to Ohio State, and he was co. So he really hasn't done anything to separate himself. You know what I mean? So when you're under the type of leadership that he's under, has been under, you know, at Ohio State and now at Oklahoma, you know, those things are are what kind of gets him noticed because he's had the mentorship from some pretty great coaches. Right. So. So, and, you know, you know my feelings on, you know, Lincoln going to the pros. I'm still on the fact that he hasn't, he hasn't done anything yet. Lincoln has it. The one thing he hasn't done is coach a complete team. For three years, he's had a bad bad defense, and that's For part sure. of the head coach's job. Yeah, you know, everybody wants to keep leaning on his offense and da 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 da, um, all that jazz, and that being a head coach in 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 pro. Now, when he starts putting together teams like Alabama, which I believe he's going to, and Clemson. These teams that are going to, you know, I still think we're going to compete for the playoff spot next year. I think we're going to for several years now, maybe eventually win one of the dang things. Yeah. But I think we're going to see that type of team here. When he starts doing that, that's when I'll get worried. Okay. I just don't think right now he's a complete coach. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm with you. Whatever. You know, you can't. Okay, I want to keep him. <laughs> he calls it three sides of the ball, and he's only coaching one so far the, the for his first three years. And that's no knock on him. It's just a fact, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, our defense has been terrible. It's on him. No, oh, it's on Mike Stoops. No, he was the coach. He could have fired Mike Stoops day one. Yeah. You know, I understand your loyalty, but it falls back on him. So, it is what it, what the heck are you watching? Uh, I'm not sure what it is, to be honest with you. <laughs> but it ain't sports. We know that. Actually, it's a show called Fever Pitch, and it's about baseball. So no, it's, so it's kind of about there. Sports. You go. But um, okay. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm looking through here. Is there anything else we need to talk about, Rob? For the or folks out there, I don't think there is. I think we kind of covered. Did we cover everything? I think so. We got our baseball talk in. We got. I'm excited about our new coaches still. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the. I think tonight they were voting on their, you know, um, do you see the amount of pay cut DeMarco Murray's took from, he's making, I think it's $330,000 a year. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean. <laughs> from playing in the pro. I don't think he really needs the money. <laughs> But, you know, if he feels bad about that salary, he can go ahead and just sign that over. Yeah, sign it over to you. I'll be fine with it. So Yeah. Um, but uh, it was funny. 
I put on there that, you know, somebody took a picture of the Brinks truck because, you know, they're, they're meeting and, you know, I put on Twitter that they were dropping off your check. Yeah. Uh, well, it take, yeah, it takes a couple of guards to, <laughs> you know, keep everybody from laughing. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> you know, it was funny that the Brinks trucks were at the stadium today, you know, and uh, we could. Well, they're always there. We always have Brinks Yeah, but somebody, you know, took a picture of it. I can't remember who it was, mm-hmm. took a picture of it because, you know, they're approving the coaches' salaries. Yeah. Uh, the Board of Regents is. Yeah, I'm excited about what they're going to bring to it. Um you know, a high, you know, a high intensity defensive coach. Um, they're filling that side of the ball up again with those, you know, with Grinch and um, these guys to more like it was in the early stoop days, guys that were, you know, snot flying and spit coming out. And <laughs> Well, I got to be honest with you. I'm kind of excited about what kind of running back, you know, is going to come here, you know. Yeah, because of DeMarco. It's because of DeMarco. I mean, you know, he's – an all pro he was you know i mean just fantastic in college fantastic no, in and pros. he's still relevant enough still young enough that the kids remember who he is down in texas you know they're gonna know who demarco is well i mean he's he's just an absolute specimen so you know when demarco comes walking into your home you know yeah mom's probably gonna swoon a little bit <laughs> you know i'm just saying yeah but uh you know I, I'm I'm excited about it. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it's interesting. And then you know, we are still working, guys, with uh, Louis trying to work out the stuff for the spring game. Um, not a whole lot of work, but just times and all that. And, and like I said, the game is at five. Rob was right; I was wrong. Um, however, Rob's fandom can be bought. So. True that. <laughs> Anybody out there with an the next spare 15 mil want to test that theory? Yeah. Be my guest. So, um, but, uh, and here's one. I, I mean, Oklahoma football just put a tweet out, back to work. And how are you on the Oklahoma with the wagon wheel logo? Mm, I don't know. I'd have to see it. Yeah, it's a picture of uh, Lincoln and uh, it says Oklahoma. It's a Jordan has a wagon wheel on it. I'm not a big fan of the wagon wheels. They fall off too often. <laughs> what that? kind of wagon are you driving? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the defense has little uh, Speed D um, patches on their jerseys. I guess I don't follow Lincoln because I don't know. It's OU it. football. Oh, you football I tweeted that. I both of them, so whatever. Anyway. Yeah, but he's wearing it. And I've seen baseball stuff with the wagon wheel on it. Maybe I just didn't know that it was a <laughs> wagon wheel. Okay, it's round. It has spokes. Have you found it yet? Yeah, I found it. What do you think of that? Oh, uh, I think it's temporary. How about that? Yeah, kind of looks like a third nipple, doesn't it? Um, well I'd have to see his other two Terry and uh, you know that's one of the things I'm going to go ahead and avoid just FYI (laughs) oh but and he's let his hair grow out that's been a question people have asked has has he had some type of hair thing done Lincoln yeah Uh, I don't know like you know hair club for men or anything about like that well he's still young he's probably still growing his hair he's not old like us no, remember the first year they were uh, Toby was giving him a hard time for uh, the bald spot. Take yeah, taking the visor off and putting on the hat, and he was talking about the top of his head was getting sunburned. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, guys, that's it for uh, this podcast. We appreciate everybody listening. Make sure to follow us on Twitter if you're not. Uh, again, if you would, please share this podcast with your friends. Tell everybody about it. And we will talk to you next time. Boomer Rob. Boomer Jerry. Hey, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Bag up. Bag up. Bag up, Terry. Put it in reverse, Terry. Put it in reverse. Oh, Lord. Lord, Jesus. What the? What you doing, Terry? Ah!